Learning expressions can be very overwhelming. Let me show you how they can help your workflow and along the way show you a couple of different expressions that you could use in a future project. So here's a project. I am using the shapes and I have three different shapes that I've created and they're moving around in a path that, and they look like they're moving in the same path with a slight delay. There's a couple of different ways that you could approach doing something like this. So let's go through them. Uh, obviously this is the one that I will wrap back around to, but one thing that people typically like to do is using a time speed delay. Now that is a node that is outside of the shapes. And so here we are, we have the same exact thing, but here we have this time speed. Time speed has a little delay here, but what we're doing here is we're delaying the frames in front of time speed. So overall, you're actually adding a little extra compute, makes things go a little slower. Three objects, not that big of a deal. A hundred objects, maybe it is a little bit more of a deal when you know building up and you can see you have multiple S renderers going on here to add all of this in. Instead of that, what we can do is we can keep everything that keep it all vectored within the shapes uh, workflow and then just use one to renderer, which then it'll render out faster. So how would we go about doing that? Uh, one way that we could go about doing that is we could add an offset. So with our keyframes. So let's say we have one shape that we have animated. The easiest way to do is to take that transform and bring it down here and then paste that and go right in like this and connect this up. And now if we take a look, we can see that they're all on top of each other. So easy thing to do is we would select this, open up our spline or the keyframes editor, take a look at all of our keyframes and let's offset this by like 10 frames, highlight everything, hold shift, bring it in 10 frames, come into this one, let's do an additional 10 on this one. Take a look at all of our keyframes, highlight, bring it in, and now we are back to the same looking animation. Now this is great because they're all being processed within one S renderer node. So speed is definitely there. The downside to this though, is that we have three different nodes that all have keyframes. So if we were to iterate on this and maybe change a path, we would have to go into each one of these transform nodes and adjust the path or adjust it in the first one and then you know do what we just did by duplicating it a couple of times and then offsetting the node. So instead of doing that, what we could do is we could just use uh, expressions. So over here, same exact thing. If we play this, these are obviously running very quick, just like the previous one. Uh, but what we have here is we only have one node with keyframes. So what we can do is we can come anywhere in here and we can adjust the path for all of the items. This is really nice when you have loads and loads of shapes. Instead of keyframing and offsetting all that, all we have to do is just write a uh, expression and it will automatically do this and we don't ever have to look back. Before we even jump into that, let me show you how you set up expressions. In a blank project here, let's grab a background and let's grab a rectangle. And to add an expression, first thing we're gonna do is on any of our inputs, we can add an expression. So let's do this angle. We can right click on it, come down here to expressions. In here we can type any value and that's what this particular input will be. Uh, will be. So if I do like 100 minus 10, it'll be 90, right? So now we have a 90 degree angle on our rectangle. Or we could pull uh, values from other locations within Fusion. So one of them is time. Time is whatever the frame number is down here. So if I do that, one cool thing is this number always changes as you play. So that allows us to automatically rotate. If you wanted it to be faster, 
you could just put in some type of math equation that would make it that number bigger and quicker. So let's times it by five. So there we go. Now we're spinning even faster. So you can do that. You can add on any input from any value that is in your composition. So now that we understand at least a single number input, we also have, these are referred to as points and they have two numbers, right? They have an X and a Y. So if we were to manipulate that and we go into expressions, we have an X and Y. So we have two values there. We can easily go into one of these and let's uh, put it in semicolons. Let's do like time divided by 100, right? So now uh, throughout time, this is obviously going to move. So as we go, we can see it's moving across, right? I didn't add any keyframes and it's all based off of the values that are down here. So this is how we can start to create different animations and modify different values based off of other values. So now that you at least understand that, let's go back to our previous composition. And in here, I have two inputs that both have values that have keyframes every 15 frames, right? So those are all the positions and I can easily change them like we did before to manipulate where all of those would go. So for each one of these transforms, we added in an expression. These are always so small, so it's hard to show. So I'll just go like this. Can we zoom in? Control plus. There we go. So what we did is we grabbed the first transform, right? So that's this one. And what we're doing is we're going get value within this transform. We're saying the input that we're gaining the value from, so the X offset in here. And then we have to give a time in which we wanna grab, right? So you could put a hard value in here if you wanted to, if you just wanted to grab you know, frame 45's value and use that. But what we want is we're going to use the input value down here of 37 minus 10. So whatever this value is, if it's 10 frames before, what was the value up here? So that will be our 10 frame delay. And down here, we did the same exact thing. Oh man, I lost it. But instead, we just put a 20. So these are hard values in here for our delay, but I can, I'm going to show you how you can change this as well. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, currently what we have uh, set up. And that's how we are able to animate this by just using one node. And so if we had a huge project here with a whole bunch of shape layers, or it can be anything, it doesn't have to be you know, a setup like this, it can be anything in Fusion we can use one node to kind of power the whole animation or at least different aspects of the animation. Another cool thing is we can use nodes that aren't even connected. A lot of people think that nodes need to be connected like this. So I have a custom tool over here. I'll just delete it and I'll just create another one. Uh, you just type in custom tool. It doesn't really need to be a custom tool. Uh, at, in a later video, I'll show you how you use a custom tool, but with any node, you can add inputs. And I'll make another video uh, in the future about uh, the, all the different input styles that we can add in. But let's create an input. So I'll come over here, edit controls, and we'll call this delay. And we want it to be on the page that's over here, the controls page. We want it to be a number, and we will turn it into a screw and hit enter. So now we have a delay over here. So if you ever want to pull a value from another node, all you really have to do is just hover over and in the bottom left, it'll tell you what you need to use to access that value. So you can see we have custom tool one, number in one. If I come down to my delay, it's custom tool one dot delay. So obviously custom tool one is just the name of the node. If we were to change this to CT1, um, down here you would see that that changed to CT1, right? So it's just the name of the node. What we can do is now, let's put this to 10, because that's kind of how our project's currently set up. And let's go in back into here. And instead of this 20, 
what we can put in here is because our node is currently ct1 so ct1 one, one uh, dot delay and so what this will do is it will grab the time minus ct1 ct1's current value is 10 but this will allow us to have a control where we can then adjust the delay uh, later so i will copy all of this and we'll replace it in here and in here but this one we need to obviously change this to the y offset and then down here uh, we will need to add a little bit of something extra so we we need to do a calculation on this as well so we'll put this in parentheses and we will say uh, times two because we need this to be double V uh, delay. So I'll put that in here and then come into here and then put uh, Y. And now everything should look the same, but what we can do is we can come into here and we can change this to a five delay. We could go 15 and now they're farther apart and we can bring it back to, let's do three. So now they're really close to each other. So that's how we would set this up. And again, we didn't have to change any keyframes to be able to manipulate how close they are together, how far apart they are, their location. Again, all I would have to do if I wanted to change the pathing, just come up to this one and manipulate the path, right? So now it goes up there. Um, but yeah, so that is the power of expressions. Let me show you a couple of others real quick. Let's go into round. So if you needed a counter, let me take all of these, turn them off. If we needed a counter, so here's my custom tool one and I have a timer, it goes from one to two. In the process, we have a lot of uh, numbers in here, right? Maybe that's what you want. Maybe it's not. If you're just trying to do a small counter, maybe you just want one or two decimal places or maybe three. So there's ways that we can, this is getting a little bit more into Lua, but I will leave this below. If you wanted to have two or three, this is going to round uh, our number to the third decimal. And then you can also do a round down, as you can see here. And that's what floor is, or we can round up, which is ceiling. So we have that as well. Uh, but yeah, these are all different things that we can do with other values from other nodes. And so we have another one here. This is just one that I created with text. We can see that we have a little bit of an animation going on here. And the cool thing with this, just like we were doing before, I have one set of keyframes and it manipulates all of them just like that. And if we want to, we can come into the spline and we can do a little overshoot like that. So they do a little overshoot and back in. It's a little strong, but you get the idea. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, possibilities here. And here's one last one for a little idea. So this one is just a little bit of a rotation 180, right? So that's just one, uh, 180. Cool thing that we can do, is that we didn't go over yet, is that if I want to, I can take these and I can come in and I can set a loop. So now we can ping pong. And actually let's bring our keyframe back to 60 so that that's in the middle, like that. And now we can see that we ping pong back and forth. And let's make this uh, smooth as well. There we go, we got a really nice loopable animation now. And this is all just running off of this one. So let's copy this and paste it, bring it in and let's make it, oops, let's make it smaller. There we are. And let's go into our angle here and we can, let's add on here plus 45. Let's go 45 plus, so it's a little offset. And then we could, uh, yeah. So there's slightly, these are kind of together. So let's actually uh, come in here again 
let's add in more angles. So times five. You're creating a pretty complex animation and it's all powered off of one set of keyframes. So if we ever need to, we can come back into here and maybe we don't want this to be, um, turn that off or something of that nature. And you know, we could take this and go even longer, ease it even more. So they spin really fast and they come to a stop. So I feel like that's a pretty good spot to start with expressions. There's so many different possibilities and so many different use cases. I always find it difficult to make one of these videos because I want to inspire as many people as possible, but not lose people in the process of showing different uh, possibilities that there are with expressions. So I'm gonna leave it here. Join me over on Post Pro List. We'll be talking more about expressions. You can ask me over there any questions you want. Uh, revolving around Fusion, DaVinci Resolve. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Till next one, guys. See ya.